Indeed, six years ago, Peter embarked on his pathway of visionary communication. His very first speech was aptly titled, The Man I Will Be. Now, having completed all five levels of the pathway, yeah. he was looking back on how this experience has helped him. And he is going to share with us his experience. Now, if we stand up when a member does the icebreaker, I think we should stand up also when he finished his pathway. So let's stand up and welcome him here in the room. When I joined this club six years ago, I was looking for two things. On the one hand, I wanted to meet interesting people here in Russia. And on the other hand, I wanted to see where I was at as a speaker and if I could maybe get better. Because somewhere in my mind, I was already dreaming of a future as an entrepreneur. And I figured it might be handy, right, to be able to actually stand in front of people and sell them your idea or work with potential clients. Now that I've finished my pathway, I think it's a nice moment to look back on that journey and see how I did on those objectives. But also I want to share with you two unexpected benefits that I got for free along the way. Let's start with the first objective. Did I meet any interesting people? Tough question. <laughs> Just looking around the room here tonight already tells me that the answer is a resounding yes. I have learned a lot from the people in this club and I have enjoyed the time that we spent together in our meetings and outside of our meetings. We have built a very nice community here full of interesting people. So that's a resounding yes. But what about that other thing, getting better as a speaker? In order for you to judge that, we're going to have to see the baseline, right? To see how I actually spoke when I was just starting on this journey. And so tonight, you have the pleasure <clears throat> of seeing my very first speech in this pathway, my icebreaker. The man it will be, as Andrea already mentioned it, I was speaking about my hopes and dreams for the future. So let's have a look at how that went. I'm going to introduce you to my future self and very big. You can see when it's working for me. To give you a better understanding of the future me, I'm going to start the journey with the current day, my current situation. With two small kids, like the three, especially the next all right, now I'm very curious, in a room full of Toastmasters, what feedback would you give to 32-year-old Peter, having just seen this fragment? What should he improve? Good Remember what you said in your introduction as Master Monitor? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah, fair enough. Dragos, anything to add to that? A bit of, uh, so the first would be the posture. Yeah, the second would be a bit of vocal variety. Very much so. Yeah, it was the same voice all throughout the thing. And even though I was speaking about something I was passionate about, my own life, it didn't really show, did it? Yeah. So there was clearly room for improvement. Now let's see if this works as expected. It does. Beautiful. <laughs> all right, loving on technology actually works. There was room for improvement. And as I started speaking, doing the first speeches of my pathway, I did get a bit better. I saw some improvements, I added a few gestures. But about five speeches in my pathway, I started getting frustrated. Because I was getting the same feedback time and time again. <laughs> nice ideas, good structure, but the delivery can be much better. And it was true, it could be much better. But I didn't know how. Until 
William came along and took over as my mentor. And the next project that I did, which was a project on vocal variety, funnily enough, William invited me over to his place to practice together. And practice we did. I had not rehearsed the speech like I had rehearsed that speech. <laughs> I think we did the introduction at least 30 times, and then the whole speech maybe 10 times in different sections. It was hard work. And William kept giving me feedback, try out this, bigger gestures. And through that, I played with all these different techniques. I got out of my comfort zone. And then so on Tuesday, when it became time to speak, that looked a little bit like this. November 2011. A gray, cold, and windy morning. But still, I was on my bike, like a production. I was cycling like mad through the streets of Uncle Dick's, because I was in rush. I had to go. The surgeon's night was waiting for me. And understandably, I was scared. I was scared because I didn't know what I was getting. Bit better, right? The surgeon's night was his idea, by the way. That speech <laughs> that speech was a breakthrough for me. And not just because of the better delivery, but also because of something that happened after me. Because as I was picking up my clipboard, you know, like a good boy bringing it back to its place, Octaviano, a member at the time, came up to me. And he was visibly moved. And he shared with me that the story had really had an impact on him. And he had never thought to look at bad situations as generating something useful, which was the main message of the speech. I didn't really know what to do with the situation. I fumbled a thank you and I went on with my life. <laughs> I was also quite socially clumsy at the time. But, but his words made an impact on me. Because this was the first time when I had actually helped someone in the audience live better by sharing an idea. I've been able to make an impact on someone's life through speech. And that's when I realized that, hey, I like doing this. I want to do more of that. And so I decided that from now on, all my speeches were going to have a meaningful impact on my audience. <laughs> Now, that sounds very laudable, but there was a practical downside to this idea. And that becomes obvious if you look at the history of my speeches in the years after that speech. They are not as frequent as maybe I would have liked them to be. Because in this club, we have quite a few interesting people, and they've all presented nice ideas. And so for me, I put the bar really high, and often I just didn't know what I was going to share what I was going to talk about that wasn't already shared, right? Or how was I going to share it better than a guy like William, who had already gone on to win the national contest that many times. So I didn't feel comfortable, or I didn't feel like I had something that was good enough to put out there. And I didn't speak that often. But as I didn't speak that often, I also didn't grow that fast. And so this went on for a few years, really until about a year, year and a half ago, I decided, okay, I believe that I can help people by sharing ideas, but I want to get better at it. And the only way to do that is by practice. Both to be in the as they say in Romania. You build up your appetite while eating. You build up your skill while writing. And so I started doing a speech, at least one speech every month. And I feel that that has taken me on a new path of growth ever since. So what did I speak about? And what are those, bless you, two unexpected benefits that came along the way? Broadly speaking, if I look back at my pathway, I see two types of speeches. Some of them take, uh, take place in the past. They are experiences I've had, often painful ones, from which I drew lessons, which I now can share. Most notably were my speeches on my struggles with Lyme disease. When I did that recently for the National Contest in Timisoara, 
I had to stop sometimes during practice because my throat would just blow up with anger or I would start almost crying with pain. And I realized that there was some unresolved issue there that I had completely forgotten about in the meantime. And that was hard. But then as I kept rehearsing that speech and I kept telling that story over and over again, I got to a point where, hey, it's okay. It's in the past, it happened, and it's okay. And I can tell that story now and I'm okay with it. So it brought me something that I never thought about going to a public speaking club. It actually brought me healing or closure, if you call it. I'm okay with what happened in the past. And even more so, it gave it meaning. I was now able to take that painful experience and use it as a vessel to bring a good idea to my audience. And so it didn't feel all that bad anymore. So those are my speeches from the past, but on the other hand of the temporal continuum, we have my speeches focusing on the future. I like playing with new ideas. That's why I chose this pathway, right? Visionary communication. I tried out all sorts of new ambitions. And William probably remembers my speech about how I was going to become a farmer, which is something I do as a part-time activity now. And I had a speech about how I was going to become more patient as the father of two children. I, I love playing with these ideas, and I realized that that process of writing it down in the speech, of really wrestling with that material, has given me clarity. Clarity about what I actually want to go with that thing in my life. Dear fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, I have finished my pathway today. But I have not finished my journey as a Toastmaster. <laughs> there are still lots of ideas to share and ideas to explore. But most of all, I just want to still spend a lot of time in this beautiful community that we've built, full of interesting people. Mr. Toastmaster.